Hello and welcome to the Digital Culture Speaker Series. Today with us, we have Dr. Gustavo Alfonso Ricon, and he's going to be telling us about uh, the new media architectures he's been building, a vision of the shaping of space as information for uni uniting the arts and sciences. A little bit about Gustavo. Um, let me find this bio, sorry. Um, Dr. Gustavo Alfonso Rincon earned his doctorate in media arts and technology at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Rincon is educated as an architect, artist, and media arts researcher. His current affiliations include Digital Futures World, Young, Leonardo ISAST, and the Lumens Prize. His current role for the Allosphere Research Group at the California Nanosystems Institute at UCSB is Associate Research Curator of Design, Media Arts, and Science and Outreach. So Gustavo, if you would please take it away. Um, well, yes, hello, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Robert, and thank you everyone for um, inviting me in today's talk. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you everyone also for the opportunity to really um, share some thoughts. Uh, I guess everyone is suffering from uh, uh, pandemic fatigue. I, uh, I just wanna do a little report here in California, we were asked to stay enclosed again. So, uh, so this medium is a very, very useful medium. And I guess a lot of my talk will be talking, uh, will be expressing the potential of technology, where it's come from and what we can do to possibly change our um, change our relationships to it and hopefully move forward together as a strong community. And I think that that's something that I aspire to in my research. Um, so here, I'll, I'll uh, the research will, the talk today will be a little bit of reading, but mostly going through many slides of projects. And if you have any questions at the end, we can definitely go through them. Uh, I'm also available afterwards for any discussions or comments. So I'll start the little reading portion. All right, so um, hello and welcome to my talk. Um, um, I'm a recent graduate of the MAT program at UCSB. Uh, I worked with the Allosphere Research Group at CNSI and um, I've exhibited nationally, internationally with the quantum composition projects with Dr. Joanne Kachamarin and the Allosphere Research Team. I also work professionally as an architectural designer uh, doing design engineering and media architecture works. Um, and I wanted to thank Arizona State University uh, and the invitation to speak today, the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts, the School of Arts, uh, Media and Engineering. I wanted to finally thank uh, Diana uh, Eitan Schenker for her inspiration and leadership in the past year, leading to a strong and vibrant Leonardo Aziz community. Uh, I think it was uh, meeting her and the Leonardo community while I was at the tail end of my dissertation that activated me into um, really imagining uh, a global community solving this problem that we're encountering today. Uh, the title of my talk is New Media Architectures, A Vision of Shaping Space as Information for uh, Uniting the Arts and Sciences. I wanted to preface uh, some of what I'll present today with the following quote. Uh, the first beginnings of things cannot be distinguished by the eye, uh, by Titus Lucretius Carus. Uh, it's an important quote, and, and if we have time to talk about it, uh, I'll share with you some of my thoughts. I wanted to, even though this is a, a very a wordy uh, slide, I wanted to briefly kind of tack, uh, go over the first part, uh, the first paragraph that's uh, highlighted. Today, humanity is confronting radical accelerated change in all aspects of existence. We recall stories of speculative futures that influence our present lives. Many questions are left unasked, but answers reside in our individualistic lived experiences, both physical and virtual, images, geometry, sounds, and texts found in our aesthetically driven world can now be quantified as the metaphysics of data. 
If algorithms are embedded in all forms that create space, how can a new conceptualized view of embodied data be used to empower the evolution of our human existence uh, within collapsing natural systems in future societies? A new media architecture's research practice will be presented that critically explores the unification of information of space, fo focusing on the intersection of the arts, architecture, and sciences. Everything is information with the digital age and the ease of the transformation of information. The science of self-organization is an area that both arts and sciences have explored since the beginning of time. Today's research is driven by an overall purpose to discover the underlying patterns of the flow of movement of all materials requiring a continued evolution as a new conceptual, computational, and software systems to simulate and quantify what exists. Today, I will speak a little bit about a vision of the shaping of space as information, a research practice that explores an architecture that acknowledges the challenges of simultaneously evolving new fields and the opportunity to unify the arts and sciences into a translating of information over time as material and a structural narrative of information that continually unfolds, incorporating complex systems research. Here are the parts of the presentation today. Part one, new media architectures inspirations. Uh, I'll do an introduction, I speak about uh, prior works, do a historical background, very brief, uh, looking at the idea, part two, I'll cover methodologies, uh, introduction there, and I'll go over the work in the different labs uh, that I worked with at uh, UCSB, the Allosphere, Four Eyes Trans Lab. I will uh, talk about uh, instrument design as it pertains to the Allosphere uh, Research Group uh, and the research that we did exhibiting works uh, throughout the world. Uh, talk about uh, implementation, uh, part three, conclusions. Uh, part three, we'll talk about new media architectures, a new conceptual framework, conclusions. There'll be an addendum. Part four, media, new media architectures current. Now, thank yous and questions. I will continue to discuss information as a conceptual construct and how all that we experience can be reduced to individual bits of data. This research will cover artistic media archaeology examples, artistic and scientific experiments, and the potential of a poetically engaging use of time as a form of materiality. I will show art and science research in and out of time. Finally, I will demonstrate the opportunities to experience immersive works through the abstraction of mathematical and scientific principles found in nature. I understand a new understanding of reading aesthetic qualities in the material of information. This idea can be explored as interdependent narratives Im implied in a foundational understanding of world making. A quote from uh, um, the co-chair of my committee, uh, Professor Novak, a liquid architecture, an architecture of relations, an architecture in which the final built object is rested from an infinite continuum of possible variations. The creation of systems of relationships and the assignment of specific values becomes the foreground of the architect's activity and invention. Novak, 1988. I will discuss in this uh, the motivations, personal motivations, moving from an architecture of a spatial phenomenon to a spatiotemporal phenomenon, problem, the integration of these disciplines into a new field. Part one, media architectures inspirations. Uh, in this section, I will go over a view of the world before uh, new media architectures. Uh, I am interested in a rather singular goal of making the built environment responsive to me and to you individually, a right 
I consider as important as a right to a good education. I will go over my academic research, art and architecture, architectural professional design practice and research and development, briefly go over independent and startup experimental design and engineering practice, nonprofit uh, art organization, Foundation for Art Resources. Uh, also briefly as an educator for Otis College of Art and Design, the liberal arts uh, department and the interactive product design department. In this section, I will go over an initiative of one project that centers uh, a unified practice that grows from an academic uh, practice combining both arts architecture and computational generative experimental practice, fabrication, and experience design. I will also look at another initiative for the Foundation for Art Resources in LA, California, and uh, the Stuntman Awards. Uh, this is the beginning of combining architecture, event design, and experience design. All without knowing is exploring the shaping of spaces. This project includes challenges that are artistic, architectural, design, fabrication, and engineering. The sciences were incorporated, were used in the pursuit to create an overall experience, multi-outdoor exhibition experience in Paramount Studios in Los Angeles, California. Algorithms, world making, and instrument design was undertaken. So, so in this work, uh, it's for the, for the Foundation for Art Resources. The two video below covers um, it covers a little bit about the my initiatives for education after. Um, uh, to graduate programs in the arts and architecture. And I wanted to democratize knowledge from the university system to the community. So it's been something that has been uh, a very important interest of mine ever since I was an undergraduate. I was mentored by um, uh, a very kind uh, professor and very talented uh, Professor Helen Frederick, who is emeritus at George Mason University. She had her own nonprofit. She basically mentored me and gave me the experience to exhibit and to see her world at the Smithsonian Women's Museum, uh, working with the Baltimore Museum of Art and understanding the structure of the arts and on the East Coast in New York and also the funding. So looking at uh, the um, the NEA, National Endowment of the Arts, and how that works. Um, I Briefly, this slide actually shows from left to right the people. Uh, the exhibit here uh, was a series of talks in the Japanese American Museum uh, in Los Angeles. Um, literally, what happened was that we asked them, we saw their museum empty, and we said, hey, uh, my group and I, I, as the director of the Foundation for Art Resources and a group of dedicated uh, volunteers, we decided to take over these cultural institutions and they opened their doors. They just wanted to know who we were, if we were responsible and who we brought in. So in four years of being uh, as the acting director of this organization, we brought in uh, artists, philosophers, uh, university professors, thinkers from all over the world. Uh, um, it was uh, the most uh, exciting, uh, exhilarating, but also um, challenging because I was working in an architectural office full time as well as doing this full time. The next project that I wanted to talk about was the Stuntman Awards at Red Bull. So this is uh, working um, with. Um, Plasis Design uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, Benham Samara, who is, a de who is a dear friend and a colleague, met him at UCLA. And I uh, just wanted to go briefly with this. 
What you're seeing here is some of the research uh, from his dissertation that we incorporated into this opportunity to work with our client, Greg Ball. And we were the first uh, outside design firm that won a competition um, that they made available. And before then, it was mostly Austrian companies that won. And we won because we started to look at narrative. We started to look at how we could incorporate uh, an idea of uh, narrative and fantasy and illusion to the work. Here's the site plan very quickly. Um, they asked us to go and to um, take a look at their branding and to divide them up into exhibits. So this first one body was the um, a part of the dissertation research from my um, colleague, uh, Dr. Benham Samara. And this is a part of his, um, his basically machine that was, uh, had an interface and you can move his limbs. And he was hanging in this truss system that was probably 20 feet high. This is a mind exhibit where you would sit down in a chair, they would put some sensors on your head, it would read data, and then there would be video, but also an animation that would get into uh, a meditative position if you were calm, and if not, then there would be some movement. Uh, wings, uh, we worked with a Cirque du Soleil dancer, we made this truss, and there was various uh, ways of activity and interface with this exhibit. This was the most challenging of them all, energy. We, this, uh, where you see the Red Bull logo, is a Tesla coil. And the first uh, iteration of the project, we uh, wanted it to be over everyone's head and have a floor a mirrored floor on the bottom. Uh, we were told that uh, that would be an insurance nightmare, but as long as we had the Tesla coil uh, 20 feet away from everyone, so on the stage, uh, it's like, I think, like 10 or 20 feet away, then it would be fine for insurance purposes. So uh, when the Tesla coil erupted, it shook the entire Paramount Studios lot. We're going to go briefly to historical background of the dissertation, read briefly the uh, notes here. I will discuss Zanakis, uh, complex systems and self-organization. We will review the foundational precedence of the shaping of spaces as information. How does one shape space as information? I have researched the component parts that are, that are the foundation of my research as algorithms, the key and the tool, world making, the algorithm that resides in the world, and instrument design, the space that uh, it resides. Here, um, even though this is an imposing graphic, uh, you're looking at the top, which is a map of new media architectures going, uh, starting with Greek philosophy. Right now I'm looking at uh, knowledge and geometry that's before and now to the present. Um, in the middle, you're looking at different labs, artists, um, artistic movements, conceptual art, um, uh, algorithmic art, robotics, computation. There's MIT Media Lab there with Negroponte. Uh, there's many seminal people in the field that, uh, that I'm drawing from and pulling from to make this new um, area of research. On the bottom there, it's a, a picture diagram of my progression through the university system, through professors that influenced my path, and also um, some of the people that passed while I was in graduate school. So I wanted to, in homage, say three people that I met and two of them that I worked with closely, um, Michael Asher, from California Institute of the Arts, Chris Burden at UCLA, and I had the honor to meet uh, Zaha Hadid at UCLA and talk with her briefly. She had uh, amazing energy. Here's the work from Yanis Anakis. 
In this presentation today, I will only highlight the partnership between Yanis Anakinis and Le Corbusier in the Phillips Pavilion. This is where the collaboration created a built form from a composition metastasis. I'll read a quote. Natural events such as collisions of hail and or rain with hard surfaces or the song of cicadas in a summer field, these sonic events are made out of thousands of isolated sounds. This multitude of sounds seen as totality is a new sonic event. This mass event is articulated in the forms uh, forms a plastic mold of time. This led to Zanakis to incorporate a, a whole new mathematical structure into his acoustic work event before the computational platform. This led to an evolution, especially in the arts and architecture worlds, to look at spatio-temporal relationships. Part two, new media architecture is an idea. Um, uh, the diagram isn't supposed to be intimidating, but this is uh, kind of how I, I put together a lot of ideas. I put them as posters and I um, put them into a place where I can see a map. Uh, this is a diagram of new media ar architectures. Uh, I'm trying to map a new, new field with these diagrams, um, looking at uh, agent-based behaviors, diagram diagramming of the flocking swarming algorithm, Mac mapping the different spatio spatial precedents for the creation of immersive spaces. Also um, looking at um, thinking about where the search space was for my research. And that's the work that I've worked. That is the work that I consulted closely with uh, Professor Joanne Cochera Marin and Professor uh, Marcus Novak. How did I get here? It took me reflecting on all of my prototypes and research that I did in the three media arts and technology labs at UCSB, the Allosphere, Four Eyes, and the Trans Lab, to come up with this structure. I will cover the methodologies briefly. When looking at each one, architecture, media arts, and sciences, I've identified contributions in each that are important in establishing my field. The biological sciences for self-organization and complex systems, the abstraction of the self-organization -organi uh, algorithms like the flocking and swarming algorithm coming from the computational sciences, also with the computational sciences and engineering, the beginning of multimodal interactions with human computer interaction and scientific visualization as the main drivers. Another main driver in HCI deals with in virtual environment research and in media arts, it adds a new sense. This leads me to the sub areas of research forming new media architectures, the algorithm, world building, and instrument design. Uh, algorithms from virtual to the material. I worked extensively um, with the Boyd's algorithms and used various frameworks and created programs. This resulted in years of research in flocking and swarming, flocking and swarming predator prey models, the flocking and swarming predator prey models generations. In each project, I recreated and experimented with the algorithm, transforming it directly to become a materialized fabricated object and uh, works. Uh, this diagram shows an analysis of the program created in Allolib, which uh, was created from the Allosphere um, research facility and the research group of flocking and swarming systems. My research of generating compositions and forms required an understanding of the why. Uh, why was this important? Why was it real? And how did I capture it in my mind before programming? Uh, the title of this work is called Movimientos Hermosos, an initial uh, study, um, an initial study of the path, studying behavior of agents in time. This was uh, C++ uh, coded in um, Allolib uh, of a flocking and swarping predator prey model. These are some of the pictures. Uh, this is initial data reduction studies and formal studies from point data from that program. This is a rendering. This work represents an artistic study of a flocking swarming algorithm that shows flow and impedance. It is a single species that is used as the data. The flocking aspects deals with the flow and swarming deals with the invisible predator data that disrupts the flow. 
renderings, renderings continued, study of fabrication. Uh, this is part of an analytical process, creating uh, a media artwork through arts and science research. This is titled Un Abrazo Repulsivo de un Rebaño de Emociones, Rendering, an analytical view, studies in mathematical evolution of generative patterns. This is a CAD fabrication study. Basically, how do I get from concept to software to fabricated object? This is the final outcome. In this section, this section ends with quantum composition series created by Dr. Joanne Kachamarin and the Allosphere Research Group. This is a fabricated study of prob uh, probably possibly. To the left are the initial studies, the simple form. To the right is the complex study and uh, Dr. Kuchamarin's uh, objective to have fabricated in the work. Uh, this uh, fabrication study of the data is part of ethereal, a moment in time representing the climax of the immersive quantum compositional experience. This is only a part of the outcome. So I had to um, look at the data, get the data, scrape the data, fix the data, uh, find a way to fabricate the data and price the data. And ultimately this was one part of many uh, to make a whole. In moving to my next area of investigations dealing with virtual worlds and instrument design, I did research in three different labs. So this one is the Allosphere, uh, did as-built instrument uh, drawings and worked on the CNM project with Dr. Jamie Marth. In this diagram, this shows a diagrammatic arc of my conceptualized understanding of the trajectory of the Allosphere and traversing through the clear path from cave to allosphere to allosphere type instrument, uh, including the HMD. In virtual worlds and instrument design, the environment collaborations and experiments, the allosphere. I'm just gonna play you a little bit of. Beautiful, you're flying music. This is some um, of the research Dr. that you're going Joanne to see Kuchamarin's that we're undertaking at the Allosphere. On the upper left, but first a little bit about this group of artists, scientists, and engineers that are working together. I'm a stage. composer, orchestrally um, trained, and the inventor of the Allosphere. With my visual artist colleagues, we map person. complex but, mathematical um, algorithms that unfold in, in time short, and space. Visual um, it is an experience of wonder if you're there in person. And I think the other problem is how do you virtualize it? And that's something we'll address a little bit later. These are part of my uh, studies and investigations of creating as-built drawings for the Allosphere. This is a part of a project of uh, wiring designs for new sensors for the Allosphere. This right here is part of a project of CNM where we had to create a uh, a uh, simulation bridge, of a virtual center, cadaver. So this is scan data, data created as um, surface texture mapped. And then we had the to create a simulation as a part of the um, millimeter level down into project. The micrometer level. Once Ultimately, this was a part of many parts of the project. One is to make cell. a simulation, an animation. The other is to make a simulation in the allosphere, and so. third would be the ultimate penultimate would be getting National Science Foundation research and viruses. having a team of people so come together small, and to address this problem. And uh, Dr. Joanne Kachamaran, sure her life's research is to try to make those wrong. cohesive teams so in many different top institutions throughout the world come together and make things real. Uh, this is a Four Eyes Lab. So here, the second lab that I worked with, Four Eyes Lab, was co-directed by Matthew Turk and Tobias Hollerer, a lab that uses HMD instruments to recreate uh, that creates environments. It is an embodied single user exper experiment. Uh, in what you're seeing here is while running experiments using the HMD, uh, literally my part of this project was to assist um, 
uh, Dr. Cha Lee, who this was his core research. And my, my contribution was to understand how to make these spaces, um, these virtual spaces remote, uh, kind of modular to go from different areas, but also to add the content in virtual space and do user studies. So what makes virtual reality real? What are the gradients from non-real to real? That was the objective here. This was a paper that was uh, published in IEEE VR, uh, and you see the authors. It was a pleasure working with Dr. Tobias Hollerer and Cha on the experience. I was brought into the project uh, because of my prior years working with the Alisphere Research Group and uh, wanting to work together in something unique and different and fun. And the third lab is with the Trans Lab. This was also working with the HMD, but uh, the difference is that it was a, there was also a component of group collaboration in these uh, spaces. Uh, I wanted to um, say a shout out to uh, Professor Marcus Novak. This is also a part of some of the work that was done in discussion during his transvergence uh, classes, his series, and at the end, his Themis classes that are an exciting new type of curriculum for undergraduates to be trained and understand the totality of technology and ethics and uh, mathematics, arts, and sciences. Uh, it's a wonderful class, so I would highly recommend it. Um, in this work, it's experiments of flocking and swarming, multi-agent generational systems, data drawings, uh, 2D diagrams, 3D data and VR within the HMD. So in here, I'm, I'm looking at creating a system, looking at how the systems can be virtualized, how they can be immersed, and then what do these systems uh, help you decode and find? Uh, this, uh, this drawing represents an experiments in flocking and swarming, data drawings inside the HMD. So how to really look at uh, the drawings, find, um, look at the data within the HMD and how does that help you create artistic space, sculptural space. This right here was a continuation of that work, VR World Studies Rendering and Drawings, CAD and Unity. So the 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 data was brought into unity uh knotted together you could be immersed and it was a the first space where i could experiment uh with narrative beyond the sciences so how to see this data in a creative way uh vr world studies rendering drawings cad and unity so i'm uh, experimenting and researching with the aesthetic and poetic nature of the media arts and virtual world making uh, my contribution to the group work Future Tripping was also uh, for the use of my sonic agents and virtual objects. And hopefully you'll uh, hear briefly some of the sound works that I did. Uh, this work is uh, also part of the Trans Lab uh, Moon Moon ex experimentation. I provided some of the data and sound works. It was a group uh, collaborative project uh, spearheaded by uh, Professor Marcus Novak. You see my colleague here, Tim Wood, and he's, he's a dancer, also a computer scientist. And let's go to the next thing. What you'll see is some of, you'll hear some of the sounds that were created on my end for the piece, but my contributions were data, different type of experiments with data, uh, insert them into the three, 3D world, and to uh, contribute sounds so that another uh, partner, a collaborator would spatialize them. And uh, Aaron, who was one of uh, my colleagues, he actually created the software to rotate. So this isn't just one person's uh, imagination. This was working in a group. This is the second project in this series of, um, of this class. And how do you, Imagine contemporary cinema. How do you imagine contemporary science fiction, sciences, narrative? Uh, it's hard to describe, but it's uh, it foundationally changed my understanding of how to look at the world. And part of my dissertation was inspired by these series of classes. 
uh, quantum composition installations. Uh, just wanted to acknowledge that this was also a team effort. Uh, Dr. Joanne Kuchamarin is uh, the co-chair of my committee, but she's also has been a mentor that I can't really say, can't speak highly enough. If anyone uh, has a chance to work with her or and or be her student, uh, I would say jump at the chance. She is like the sun. And uh, depending on how close you get, uh, you'll get all of our energy. So what you see on the left is uh, the beginnings of our research on taking uh, virtual reality, making the allosphere into a screen, putting them into different exhibits. So this project is anchoring uh, a beginning exhibition sponsored by the Mosher Foundation on um, exhibiting a quantum compositional work. Uh, I think we proposed this installation a year and a half before it was finalized. Um, I could be a little bit off with that, but what you're seeing is um, uh, one of my contributions, uh, educated as an architect and media arts is uh, how to unify the languages of art, design and engineering together with the sciences. Uh, also doing research on some of the um, quantum objects that were created within this system and then fabricating them and making super graphics for the exhibition. This is a picture within uh, the exhibition on the opening night. Um, I think there was a few Nobel laureates inside the exhibition to at opening night to hear Dr. Kuchamarin play her quantum instrument. This uh, from the quantum instrument to a new lab that was created at uh, called Allo Portal at uh, UCSB. This was taking some of the technology and lessons learned and putting them into the lab and using it as a prototype space so that we would not use the allosphere constantly and take all of its resources. Like there would be different tiers and different ways to experiment. Uh, this right here is. Uh, evolving that research into a proposal for ethereal. This is ethereal and this was um, exhibited at um, I Isia in Guangzhou in 2019. Um, this right here is a, is Marioi a proposal for Seagraph uh, 2020 installation proposal. Uh, Dr. Kuchamarin, uh, Dr. Kuchamarin is is um, pictured on the top left. Um, here is some of the process that's um, involved in there. Basically, Allo Portal in the upper left. Dr. Kuchamarin, uh, Dr. Kuchamarin and I went into the um, into the lab space during COVID, and we found a way to abide by all of the rules. We wore masks. We, it was an unsettling time, but we made art, and um, and this is the fruits of the art. Part three: new media architectures and new conceptual framework. Uh, bringing all these together, uh, bringing complexity theory into architecture, shaping spaces, information. The three areas of research, art, architecture, space, media arts, time, and science data. In the implementation and reflection of my practice-based research works, I believe that some of the problems we solved as architects within the discipline are complicated systems, not complex systems. Uh, in my research, I have traced the, um, the components moving from architecture to new media architectures. Here's what I've observed. One, an architecture moving from complicated systems to complex systems for our new media architectures. And two, the notion of liquid architectures as the shaping of space as information. And on the right is a diagram of new media architectures discipline, uh, what the different component parts are and what I'm looking at. Conclusions, uh, human beings are viewed as behaving systems are quite simple. The apparent complexity of our behavior over time is largely a reflection of the complexity of the environment in which we find ourselves. Uh, Herbert Simon, 1969, 
My contributions are cre uh, creation of a new conceptual framework for the media arts, new media architectures, advancing a new media architectures practice-based research, creation of a historical foundational timeline tracing new media architectures. These are my contributions to the field. Here's an addendum. I wanted to basically briefly go over a few projects afterwards um, that I didn't include in the dissertation that were seminal. One, um, I was a curator for the uh, end of the year show, which was a part of uh, the media arts program. And it was uh, paired up with the Alice Fear Research uh, Group and the Moser Foundation. So in that project, I acted as a curator. Uh, we did outreach. And then we also uh, met the mission to um, combine um, university research and actually bring it down to the high school level and for those that are willing to learn and to collaborate. And that is a shared vision from Dr. Kachar Marin and uh, it coincides with my vision and some of the previous work that I showed with the Foundation for Art Resources. Secondly, uh, the All Women in Media Arts and Sciences um, conference, I was a curator and event designer for the, uh, for the event. And this was a month before COVID, uh, the pandemic hit and everything stopped. Uh, and it was, um, I think it was around 5,000 square feet it was like 20 feet tall and you could see a little bit of photo. And then the Alisphere research team Seagraph. Uh, this was the MAT end of the year show, some of the pictures. On the top left, the diagram of the community, MAT, CNSI and uh, researchers. The bottom right is the uh, site plan, the different floors of the buildings and the different sites, because it was on two sites, four different days, it had concerts, it had uh, media works, um, computer science labs, engineers also showed, um, collaborated with professors, there were panel discussions and there was a catalog on the upper left with the headphones that was a part of it. Part four, media, new media architectures, activities, affiliations and research. Now in this, um, in this a series of works now, um, I wanted to um, acknowledge that Leonardo uh, was, uh, was an experience for me that um, really awakened my understanding of uh, where I was. So I was trapped in research and I didn't really have a way up. I needed to finish my dissertation and to do the work and to figure out how to change the world. Well, when the pandemic hit, all the rules went away, and now what do I do? So what you see on uh, for Leonardo Azist, um, I was chosen as one of the um, writers to write a blurb on a series of talks uh, that was a part of the organization at the beginning of the pandemic, lasted for a few months. Uh, going to the from left to right, um, Ars Electronica. I also um, did some research for Leonardo, looking at how to uh, reconceptualize the organization in time of need, but also how it pertains to my research and my understanding of the problem, which is at a global scale. Uh, currently, there's a paper attached to this, a Vision of Change for CAA, which we'll, I will talk about a little bit later, but uh, uh, it's also uh, Leonardo focused and also the Lumens Prize. On the, the next series is Digital Futures World Young, Global Educational Outreach. That's with Professor Neil Leach and, um, and uh, you'll get more information next, but um, I moderated, I co-moderated two panels and I'm a part of the organization trying to uh, reinforce its values in global education and architecture and technology, and also to understand how to do more outreach and to find other communities to have this uh, uh, information beneficial. And then also my current work with the Allosphere Curation and Outreach, NSF and a LACMA proposal we're gonna try to put together. Here's the work with Leonardo and uh, Let's see very quickly if I can go out of. So this is uh, the link that 
uh, Leonardo um, helped put together. Here's my uh, co-collaborator, DC Spensley, and myself. And we spent a few months uh, working together, conceiving of the world, putting it together, working with um, a New Art City. Uh, DC specifically worked with New Art City to try to evolve and develop the tools from his two decades of uh, work with Second Life and these virtual platforms. Uh, to, from left to right, here's the front of the screen. Here uh, are the diagrams within a CAD program, and here are some of the prototypes. Here's a video that was uh, created and produced by DC going Welcome. through the user Spence interface the of, the of the exhibition. This was also a challenge presented by Leonardo. Uh, in many Our respects, but one Gustavo is how do we actually create a virtual ex ex exhibition? Two, how do we think about the problem instead of uh, pairing up artists website. with technologists, this how do we have a comprehensive way of looking at art we to make sure uh, at the both the creative level, uh, conceptual level, and the engineering level? How do we make it as one seamless web. experience? So that was the goal and the, um, is, the ambition of the project. And I'm, I'm, if we have time, we'll cover this. I'll try to go over this uh, uh, through the software, but let me see if I can real quick. And sorry. So here's the UI of the project. I'm gonna go through the entry lobby. So on my screen, it's going really fast. Uh, I know that there's been problems in the past with uh, the screen loading uh, while in Zoom. While that loads, You can see some of the uh, inside of the exhibition and how the art was placed. Uh, I would say that um, we had an intense interview process with each one of the artists. We listened to them, we took notes, we discussed it amongst the team, and then we placed them so that they would make narrative sense as a kind of a virtualized spatial exhibition and catalog. So let me see real quick. If I can get to the, it's still loading. So uh, the wonderful parts of technology, the, we'll, we'll stick with the fallback plan here with the video. Um, if you can make it to the discussion, that's okay. So in this next uh, part of my current activities is Digital Futures World Young, and I'm a part of this team, but you get to see uh, some of the speakers. The, the, we're asking for a, a world call of uh, young uh, scholars that are in university who have graduated from their professional degrees or, or um, their PhDs. So I was uh, basically asked because I reached out to them when they were doing a summer worldwide conference that really helped me contextualize and inspire me to finish the uh, PhD in a way that helped me seamlessly uh, come to terms with how to this? Really, um, so here um, I began to think about, think about the problem how can we allow my students so to the right is, uh, in the design process? Some of the work that you'll so find we... online. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, just wanted to let everyone know that on this Saturday, there is a interactive design um, lecture panel that will be live streamed also uh, on YouTube and Billy Billy. And my, um, my co-moderator, Virginia Melnick, and I will be doing that. I wanted to go back and acknowledge that uh, Victoria uh, and I helped put this together, but it was a lot of Victoria's research in her work for biodesign. Uh, currently there's a call, I'm a part of co-moderating the theory of AI and creativity uh, panel at the end of the month. And then also there's a call for papers for Digital Futures World Conference 
uh, please, if you know of anyone uh, interested, please um, have them participate. But uh, in short, Digital Futures is an educational initiative launched by Neil Leach. Uh, the aim of Digital Futures is to offer content available for free as a form of auxiliary education. The recordings of all the events are uploaded to our platform to form, to form an ever-growing repository of knowledge accessible to everyone. Um, I came on the team because I believe in uh, contributing to knowledge, uh, distributing knowledge, and empowering people, democratizing knowledge. And now with the uh, College Arts Association, I I'm on, a, uh, my work is being presented at the Chronopoetics Time and Temporality of XR Art. Um, with the chair Lidon Efrat from the University of Toronto. I will discuss briefly, uh, I will discuss my dissertation work and also some of the findings. Uh, I'm co-moderating with the um, with Erica Ruby from uh, from Leonardo and we're going to co-chair um, a panel with Dr. Kuchar Marin, uh, Professor Quidus uh, Dagli Shamer, Dr. Liliana Kanslik Gallegos and Dr. Yoon Chun Han. And I was also part of a pilot uh, MFA program debrief. So um, quickly, they um, they basically asked me to 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 do these critiques to these students because of COVID. And then months passed, and then I called them and said, "Hey, what happened?" So. Last week, I finally got to talk to the people that organized it, created it, and conceptualized it, and I might be a part of helping them organize and scale this to other disciplines and to, uh, and to further develop the organization. But on the right is my discussion with Andrew, and it was two and a half hours, and it was beautiful. Uh, this is, I'll show this a little brief, but this is some of the work that I'll be developing in uh, these quantum objects, and I'm looking at fabricating them and hopefully adding an AI learning component to it. And um, I've talked with Dr. Kachara Marin, but the idea is to create a dictionary and a catalog of all the compositional forms, three-dimensional and image forms and then find different patterns and understandings of how they relate to each other and how they can form a new language, a hybrid language with these quantum objects. I'm currently um, aiding in an NSF proposal for these educational initiatives that can scale and putting together a LACMA proposal. Um, I think this is the thank you part, but um, uh, this is my dissertation. Uh, I just finished. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge and thank Dr. Kachar Marin, Professor Marcos Novak, and Professor Marco Pelhan, the Allosphere Research Team, and my uh, MAT community. And you can see that online, I believe, and having an online presence, except for my website, which I'm updating, but hopefully that'll be soon. I wanted to leave everyone with a quote. Um, an image by Heraclitus was a starting point of this book. As it draws to a close, the image appears before me, the lyre, which consecrates man and thus gives him a place in the cosmos, the bow which shoots him beyond himself. All poetic creation is historical. Every poem is a longing to denying succession and to establish an enduring realm. Man wants to be one with his creations, to unite with himself and with his fellows, to be the world without ceasing to be himself. Our poetry is consciousness of the separation and attempts to unite that which is separated. Octavio Paz, The Bow and the Liar. Um, and I think that's it. I'm open to questions. Thank you. Thank you, Gustavo, for that uh, wonderful talk. Um, does any, any questions? You can feel free to unmute and ask or type them into chat and I can relay them as well. I'm seeing Diana start to unmute. Hi, thank you so much for that presentation. Hi, I Diana. To... <laughs> Hi, Gustavo. So I wanted to um, 
uh, ask, share a comment and, and ask a question. So sure. my, my comment is um, that I really appreciated not only your kind remarks about Leonardo uh, and myself, but I, I appreciated how generous you were in acknowledging colleagues, partners, mentors, uh, others who inspired you. And that that's so important because we're, we're all part of this larger cosmos. Um, we're connected with each other and we forget, especially when we're presenting our work to acknowledge that. So I, I think that was super important uh, as a demonstration of both humility and uh, uh, generosity and interconnection. Um, and that kind of brings me to the question I have around uh, something that, that came up to me with this last quote of the cosmos and uh, how um, Octo Octav Octavio Paz um, says so beautifully, we, we uh, look for a place in the cosmos and that every poem is a longing and so with that longing to find a place in the cosmos, um, I'm curious how this journey and all the mapping that you shared with us um, is helping, might, might help us all find different places where we find ourselves in, in this cosmos of uh, arts media engineering and of um, arts media technology and architecture. Uh. Well, maybe I'm not answering the question directly, but let's just say that um, um, it's been a long journey and um, in many ways. So I'm not sure if people understand what it means to have a dissertation. And I think people that do know, but I think I challenged myself to the point where I lost myself in the process. And then I found myself again at the end, barely. Uh, because I think you're at some point, you're just will at the end. Uh, when it comes to acknowledging colleagues, uh, working as an architect, uh, as an architectural designer in the profession of architecture, you do work in teams. So you have to be aware of how teams work, the complex systems that evolves economically through materials and through design. Um, in this iteration now in sciences, it is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. I think uh, there's an idealization that it is, but uh, I have learned through observation, through meetings and through just uh, running experiments that without others to encourage you and to have a dialogue with, uh, a lot of solutions are left uh, lost. Um, so, of course, I can go out and do art and, uh, and, and be singular and be dedicated and driven and to acknowledge a lot of, uh, I guess, um, personal motivations. Uh, but in the series of my path of education, I went through arts, architecture, and the media arts and sciences research. In the arts, I think I was a solitary, unified, uh, a single figure in a lot of my art. Then I started working in theater. And I worked with a mentor at CalArts uh, doing theater productions and technology. And then I realized, oh, wow, it's more fun working with actors and sets and technology and computers and video and scripts. And so then that's where narratives came into my mind. And then where I formed a way to see everything together. I visited MIT Media Lab at the time and uh, perchance there was an opening and I was like, oh, wow, maybe I can go to MIT. And uh, I happened to get an interview and they said, oh, come join us, drop everything, come here and learn how to program Java and work for me for little to no money. Uh, and I'm like, well then how do I follow my own art? And at the same time I was accepted to UCLA architecture and they did robotics and they did computation and they were at the forefront of the discipline. So I made a choice is to stick with the tradition of architecture. But coming to now, um, I think uh, Leonardo opened my mind again to the idea of community and global community and the power that we have as individuals unified as one. 
I think I'm very excited with the idea of, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm reading your comments, Diana. Uh, how, how do we come together as one? Creatively, I think there are opportunities. Uh, in the end, I wish the arts were more uh, were better funded robustly, like in the sciences. But uh, a lot of what you do in the arts is find a thread or a passion and push it forward to uh, an extreme. And I think that uh, there's an opportunity here to unite all of those minutes, seconds, hours that could be used to come together and solve a bigger problem. And I think that's my goal. And I think that's what I've heard through a decade of being with uh, Dr. Joanne Kachamarin and what she sees as the vision of the future. Very nice. Um, I also have a comment and a question to follow Diana's form. Uh, the comment is congratulations on defending your dissertation and getting your PhD. Um, uh, <laughs> no, my... I never, for people that have two PhDs, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but one was too much. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Well, the question I have is uh, somewhat related is, uh, what do you feel the PhD empowers you to do uh, that's beyond your um, other degrees? Okay, so, uh, so the, the PhD was my fifth degree. So two masters and two undergraduates. Um, th so just a quick story. I'm a third generation, um, uh, kind of architect in the discipline. So my grandfather was an architect and an engineer in Bogota, Colombia. So he built buildings, houses, and even hospitals. He also had a photographic memory. So he was like a walking computer in a library. And no joke, uh, he was. And I was in shock. And I kept thinking, why don't I have that memory? And I think that's where I started to understand that you have different talents, um, but he was a, a consummate professional and you can see his skill. So when I encountered the profession, after uh, a master's degree, a master's degree helps you to be a master at something. Uh, but basically that's the low, uh, that's the, the lowest level ladder sometimes at a company or at a startup. You have to learn a different language and a skill set to communicate and work with others. School does not prepare you for that, uh, unfortunately. So um, now being now as I functioned as an adjunct professor at Otis College of Art and Design, uh, I actually had to create curriculum for three years. I also had to create a theory curriculum. And then I realized that uh, these students didn't even have professional practice. So I had to teach them professional practice by my experience working for companies and my own uh, private practice. The, mass, uh, the PhD uh, gives me the ability to think as a researcher. That means that I can tell people that they're wrong because I've researched it and I have asked the right questions. And if I have problems or if I'm wrong, I will 100% admit that. But as a professional, sometimes you don't have time to think, you don't have time to learn, you don't really have time to do creative things because you're exhausted. So as an architect, uh, as an architectural designer, in my years, I think I average between 60 to 90 hours a week. The most I've worked in my own business was 160 hours in one week. And you tell me who works 160 hours in one week? Uh, I've talked to other architects in the profession. If you have your own business, you don't eat, you don't sleep, your family falls away, your health falls away. But in the dissertation, I had to learn how to rest, how to be balanced, how to ask people the right questions, and then how to respect myself and a larger global community. Very nice, very, very nice. Uh, thank you, Gustavo, for this talk. I think we are just about out of time. So everyone, let's give him a virtual round of applause across YouTube and Zoom. And uh, thank you uh, all for coming. Yeah, I just want, before, before we leave, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for coming. Also, I wanted to extend invitations to some of the current projects that I have with Digital Futures World, and then also with uh, the CAA that's coming up. 
And if you want to reach out to me, please reach out to me on my website. But also, uh, I would highly encourage everyone to look at the Allosphere uh, facility and to talk to anyone in my world. Thank you for that, Gustavo.